this trade, one sector which finds particular interest. This is one of those sectors because of the quality that we produce and the name or the branding value that we have achieved in this sector. So this is one sector where there really exists a huge scope which we need to tap and unleash with a very confident view that we will be able to increase our exports to this, in this sector. So with that, I welcome all the participants and I'm sure that today's uh, interaction will bring more and more awareness, information on different, formality, on different formalities and technicalities required and help us increase the export trade volume. So thank you very much. Now I'll be in the listening mode, listening to all the dimensions discussed by our valuable friends and partners. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir, for the introductory remarks. Now, I would like Ma'am Huma, Ma Humaira Israr to continue this webinar and uh, the exporters from our side will have their questions at the end of the session. Thank you. I would uh, thank you, Zain. I would request if the exporters, participants from Pakistan side could kindly introduce themselves first, please. First of all, I would like our Vice Chairman, uh, Mr. Javed, to introduce himself. Ma'am, uh, Humera, is it audible to you? Ji, ji, ji. I can hear you. Ji, he, he was he was the vice he was the vice chairman from Pakistan Sports Goods Association, and we have some other partners here with us. Uh, let me introduce you. Ex chairman, ex chairman, Pakistan Sports Goods Association. He will he will introduce himself with you right now. Um, I would request all the participants in the webinar to kindly mute themselves and only those unmute themselves who are requested to talk or are going to talk or raise a question because it creates a lot of uh, disturbance during the webinar. Okay, uh, it's your morning time, so I say good morning. Ji, sir. Good afternoon, Ji, sir. It's 12 p.m. Yeah, good afternoon. So from uh, sports industry, uh, we are representing the Pakistan sports industry from the Association of Pakistan Sport Goods Manufacturers and Exporters Association. This also includes goods and beers. So from this side, we understand that South Africa is the biggest market in the African continent and uh, it's rich in its uh, uh, economy. And we feel that uh, if we are given much cooperation and collaboration by the importers there at your side, we can develop a good uh, market there by the Pakistani products, which are uh, well known and uh, re reputable in the world markets. And you understand that our football and other hockey and all other things which are 
produced in Sialkot, Pakistan. They are, they are, uh, you know that they are uh, accepted in the global market, and uh, we are having a good uh, market position as well and marketplace. We only want to say that South Africa is a market which can be elaborated in between the manufacturers. And we think that if uh, we are given an opportunity to be in the market by in shape of delegations or, or exhibitions or individuals, we can do a lot there. And we have an experience from very last 20 or 40 years, we have an experience of the South African market when uh, there was a, a confirming houses in uh, UK, in Great Britain, the people who import uh, in South Africa, now it is open to import for them. We just want to, what is the, uh, their levies and duties on the importation of uh, sports goods and sports wares, especially, because uh, all these two things are now produced in Pakistan by the mill, and we are, uh, we are uh, sporting to the multinational, uh, multinational groups, like many, you know, that almost 30 multinational companies are getting products in Sealport. So we understand that uh, South African market should be uh, open for us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, now, if we have in audience any manufacturer, sports goods manufacturing company, kindly introduce yourself. Zen, do we have any sports, good, uh, sports goods? Yes, ma'am. Actually, ma'am, all manufacturers. Okay. Actually, ma'am, we have uh, these office bearers who are themselves the manufacturers of export products. Okay. And they are renowned exporters in Sialkot. The ex vice ex chairman who was currently in the introduction, he has a renowned name in the export sector, followed by the other ones, the ex vice chairman, the current vice chairman, Mr. Javed. So all of these are office bearers as well as renowned exporters from Sialkot side. Okay, now I'll begin with, thank you, Zen, and thank you, uh, Mohsin Masood Sahab, uh, for, uh, for your brief introduction. And um, now I'll proceed with my, uh, my information about the sports industry of South Africa. So South African sports industry- Sorry, ma'am. Sorry, ma'am. Sorry, ma'am. I would like to rectify you. It was not Mohsin Masood who was introducing himself with you. It was- Arshad Javed. Arshad Javed, okay. Okay, so now I'll introduce the uh, South African uh, sports industry. Uh, South African sports industry is not a homogenous industry. It's a heterogeneous marketplace. It's highly seg segmented into cross-cutting um, industries into such as uh, cross-cutting presence into industry industries such as tourism, media, medicine, education, manufacturing, and retail. Sports management, sports development, sport retail, education and training, health and fitness, sports goods manufacturing, and major event management, they're found to be most, pri uh, most popular primary products. Now, the former Tourism, Hospitality, and Sports Education and Training Authority, THETA, was the Sector Education and Training Authority, CETA, established under the Skills Development Act 1998 for the Tourism, Hospitality, and Sports Economic Sector. The sports sector of South Africa comprises of subsector, mainly sports, recreation, and fitness. Theta was subsequently undergone um, its reconstruction and currently encompasses the sphere of arts and culture. This has, this has now uh, been changed into another department, which is culture, art, tourism, hospitality, sports sector, education, and, and training authority. Now, the, the growth of the sport industry is general positively. It is positive in nature, and uh, it is influenced by the evolution of the grassroots sports sector. The largest segment of sport is not professional sport, but participation sport that millions of people participate in every day on a recreational and competitive basis, predominantly for health, fitness, and leisure purposes. Let me tell you, the health sector, when it comes to sports, South Africa has a huge gym culture, and in gyms, there are, uh, there are many sports that are being played in there, and people are very uh, uh, fitness conscious. 
mostly people are investing in their health and in, in their health and vitality grassroots community sport involvements are they uh, they have fulfilled an underrated role in uh, the emergence of sports business in the private sector on south african front several well known small businesses have established themselves in the grassroots sports sector such as um, play uh, play ball rug, uh, Raga Kids Active Education, Kiddy Sports. These are some of the brands, local brands that have established themselves. Uh, sports for all, uh, all little champ sports academy, sporting uh, chance, play sports, and Future Factory. These are some of the uh, local brands that have the established themselves at the grassroots level. Now, there are some other. Uh, in in 2019, the import of sports goods from the world was recorded to the tune of US dollars 439 million, and it constituted 0.5 percent of the total import bill of South Africa. The total import bill of South Africa is 88 billion, which is always five or six billion lower than their export bill. So they enjoy a trade surplus. Uh, 4.35 million of their sports goods. That's how, um, and the have the major articles and equipments for general physical exercise and their HS code in the four, uh, code 9506, 27, 27, 25, 20, over 25, so starting from 23 till 27, this, the import in this sector falls. Um, uh, the uh, uh, sorry, th th that was the export figure, and the imports are usually in tricycles, scooters, pedal cars, articles and equipment for physical exercise. So, in the tricycles, scooters, pedal cars, it's 162 million, and in the physical e equipment for physical fitness, is 125 million. These are the two major importing sectors for South Africa. Uh, from uh, if we look at the past 10 year data, Pakistan, uh, South Africa uh, import. Uh, of uh, sports goods has overall declined from 2010 to 2011, where it was 483, 500 million. Now it is 438. So it has from that 500 million bracket, it has gone down and crossed the 450 and now it's 430. But Pakistan's share in this is very limited. Uh, Pakistan exports of sports goods is 4.4 million, which is 1.1, 1 1.01%, 0.9. So hardly Pakistan makes 1% of the total import of 438 million, 1% of the total 438 million that South Africa imported of sports goods. Now the uh, South Africa also exports and the major exports are to Namibia, Botswana, Zambia, and the import destinations are largely from China, USA, UK, Australia, Austria, India. Tariff structure is the articles for general exercise, uh, video games and console machine, fishing rods. They do not have, they do not bear any kind of uh, duties. On MFN, nothing. Festival carnivals and other entertainment articles have 30%. Tricycle scooters, pedal cars have 20% duty on them. Sportswear have 35% duty. Now, there are some trade-related bodies also in their sports and recreation South Africa. SRSM is the National Government Department for Sports in South Africa. Uh, beside, beside, there is South African Institute for Drug-Free drug Sports. And the core focus of it is to tackle uh, the, the doping in sports in order to ensure a culture of ethic and fair play in South Africa. There is also South African Sports Confederation and Olympic Committee. And besides, there are many clubs like Badminton South Africa, Basketball, Aero Club, Athletic South Africa, Chess South Africa, Cricket South Africa, uh, Bowls, Fencing Federation, Women Golf South Africa, Boxing South Africa. On every nook and corner, you would see uh, posters, uh, training classes, coaching classes for college going girls playing uh, for golf cl uh, classes for college going girls classes for college going uh, boys uh, for girl, uh, golf so it's a very um, sport oriented and uh, uh, fitness focused society today we are lucky to have an audience i um, yunus badat sahab from id hussein id hussein is one of the uh, durban based imported importer and I.D. Hussain Sahab has a long-standing experience of also importing from Pakistan. He 
I had the honor to visit his factory in Durban uh, last year. Uh, and uh, I, am, I was very honored to have uh, the, excuse me, please mute yourself. Thank you. Um, I had the honor to be uh, to to see the, his uh, his equipment and everything, and he imports sportswear from Pakistan. So we will be very honored to have the comments, to have uh, the the knowledge shared by Yunus Badat Sahab, and um, Yun, and then from Sports Ever, we uh, he is experiencing Mr. Uh, Asad Chaudhary is experiencing a bit of a technical uh, uh, difficulty. Now I would request. I would Excuse me, ma'am. Uh, I would like to request you. Am I audible, ma'am? Dr. Zain here. Uh, I have a request. I have a request that we have with us uh, senior vice chairman Rana Muhammad Suleiman, and he deals with sports here. And this webinar was initiated on his request, and he was very keenly interested to play his part. And he has some questions, so I would like uh, to introduce him with you before we go on to the keynote speakers of this webinar. So, uh, Rana Suleiman. Thank you very much, Chak uh, It's a pleasure to be part of this uh, webinar. And I will uh, also like to thank Mr. Mera Isra for uh, importing us with uh, very valuable information. Uh, I think uh, that it's a very potential market for our schools. Uh, in South Africa, if you consider about uh, the specific industry of uh, yeah. if you consider uh, the sports industry in Salford, it is mainly known for its sports world, its component uh, sports wear. And if you look at the sporting culture of uh, South Africa, it's very competitive in terms of. Uh, Teams for football, cricket, rugby, and also the athletics as well. So I feel there is a huge uh, potential over uh, South Africa for Pakistani goods. And uh, the only thing that we're lacking is the lack of information and the lack of coordination for part of both sides. Uh, uh, just to uh, mention, uh, uh, our, our exports are only 1% of South African. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, yes, you're audible. Okay. So I think uh, we will need very effective and uh, coordinated effort from your part to impart us with the duties with the possibilities regarding delegations and the exhi exhibitions so we can explore the market and uh, make our products uh, relative to the market because most of our members are importing to europe and the usa uh, while there is less trend of uh, african country so i will be glad about this webinar into the further step of arranging uh, the B2B meeting online in a couple of months' time. We have a list of the products so that uh, we have a good matchmaking for our business. So with that, I would uh, like to thank uh, Mr. Dagsaw and also yourself as this is a very essential and important uh, sector for export goods of, export of export goods from Pakistan. So we will need to continue this effort. And uh, I, on part of Pakistan Sports Association, can uh, extend or uh, complete cooperation in terms of delegation, in terms of information and the assembly. And hopefully we can assist your efforts to gain more business for Pakistan. With that, I would like to thank you, and uh, that's all. Thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you, sir. Now, I would request Minus Badat Sahab to share his experiences with us, to introduce this company, introduce first himself, and then about his um, 
with experience and uh, of importing sports goods from Pakistan from other destination. If you know Saab, you are importing from other places like Hong Kong, China, India, um, America, UK. And the challenges that this market has in, uh, for the exporters in Pakistan. And what advice would you like to give to the exporters? And, Dr. Zaini, to mute, please. Uh, you are hearing me? Yes, sir. yes, sir, I can. Okay, okay. Uh, my name is Yusuf Badat, and, and uh, I am a partner in a family owned business which is called IG Hussein and Company, which is almost uh, 80 years old make dua that uh, we see another eight years. Uh, generally, family-owned businesses don't go more than 100 years. That's what history has. Uh, that's what we see. But uh, leaving that, uh, we've been importing uh, sports from Pakistan for almost uh, 35 years and I joined the business about 25 years back and I took over my dad and initially we were just importing footballs and soccer balls and then uh, we increased our sports goods range by uh, adding more lines. Pakistan is known for the boxing equipment and the fitness equipment. So, and also they have a lot of other products. So we are a general dealer, wholesaler. So we're not only importing uh, sports goods, but we importing agricultural veterinary goods and uh, tsunami goods, which we have one department. And uh, like that, it took one one product at a time. And we, uh, our sports goods is one division in 10 different, 10 other different departments that we have. So sports on itself cannot survive. So if somebody opens up a place and only keeps sports goods and only keeps Pakistani sports goods, he's definitely not gonna survive in this market. And um, apparel, uh, our country is very brand conscious. So they prefer brands like your Nike and Reebok and uh, Adidas and things like that. And also we have a very good manufacturer, local manufacturing. So for track suits and things like that, where the special designs need to be done, uh, we wouldn't import from Pakistan in uh, But there are soccer kits coming in from South Africa, but uh, ours is a more uh, entry level market. And we are cheaper when we manufacture uh, track suits and soccer kits locally because we buy the fabric which there's less duty and on manufactured garments there's a bit higher duty but mm, there are soccer kits coming in from Pakistan uh, of a very nice quality and that also we do stock and we do sell. Uh, boxing equipment, karate equipment, uh, knives and scissors. Uh, so we have a few partners, companies that we are dealing with in Pakistan and we have a relationship with them for the last uh, 25 odd years to 35 odd years going back to my dad's time. And Alhamdulillah, you know, 
once a relationship is built, it's so nice and so easy to deal with people like that. And um, inshallah, I hope soon as this uh, travel restrictions are removed, hopefully we plan to make a trip uh, to see our court as soon as possible. Uh, most of our suppliers come to see us regularly, at least once, twice a year. So Pakistan came to South Africa and that was a good thing. And um, generally the, the, the people who came to South Africa, they got our business. And uh, thank you to the Pakistani people. We have some really interesting uh, experiences and uh, currently uh, I'm getting a, a, a container ready from one supplier and uh, the freight prices for a 40 foot container is almost the same as a 20 foot container. And uh, so, in fact, what I did, I suggested to my supplier in Pakistan, uh, I suggested to my Pakistani supplier that because 40 foot is cheaper, uh, we will tell other suppliers to club their goods into the same container and bring in a 40 foot container instead of being two 20 foot containers. So that's one of the experiences I had in the last uh, uh, last one month with all this crazy freight prices and logistical situation that's happening all over the world, not only in Pakistan, but all over the world. Okay, thank you, That's that's, some of the points I can bring in, and any questions you can put forward to me. Thank you. Thank you, Yunus Badat Sahab. Thank you so much for your um, input. Now the floor is open for question and answers. If anybody wants to ask question from Yunus Badat Sahab or from me, you are most welcome. After the question answer session, we'll wind up the uh, we'll wind up the session. G. Sure, man. Any questions from your side? Mm -hmm. Mr. Irfan has some questions that he will ask. Mm -hmm. the situation or the import uh, from Pakistan to, to South Africa. Firstly, how, how is the political situation regarding the present scenario and with the global situation? How has been uh, the uh, how, is, how much has affected the market? Secondly, we heard that uh, there were some riots and the disturbed quite a lot uh, the, the market over there. And thirdly, how is the import situation at the at this stage and the local manufacturing? How much is it is affected with our Pakistan exports? Because there are a lot of products which are being manufactured in South Africa. And how do we compare our products, the quality product and the range and the price? Thank you very much. G. Unisab, would you like to answer the question? After you, I'll also okay. G. Unisab. All right. At the moment, the COVID situation is quiet. And uh, with the vaccine uh, with the vaccines that are being distributed and available. <clears throat> so, shukar, alhamdulillah. Uh, uh, on that side, I can see us going into a post-COVID scenario very soon, maybe a year or so, and we'll be passing the, 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 the this COVID situation. Uh, on the riot situation, we did have an issue. It's a political issue. It's a situation between two polit uh, uh, two parts uh, 
of the same political uh, uh, same political party and it's infighting in them and we just got caught in between but the business people uh, have been affected to a certain extent uh, but fortunately the government doesn't control our economy and the business so on that side of things uh, we are back and running and fortunately we're not caught up in the in the in the politics and the corruption that's involved in the country and we are we got a business to run and we are still operating uh sports side has uh declined a little bit because of uh the covid situation and but it had led to open the opening in other sectors for example instead of people training at uh, uh, gyms and pub public areas now people are training in private areas so it has led to people buying their own uh, equipment you know uh, training equipment uh, so there was pluses and minuses in this whole situation and uh, okay what was the third question that uh, the speaker asked me sir so, sir he wanted to know the uh, the position of the local industry how good the local industry is and the comparison of pakistani or the you know the, the potential for pakistani um, exporters in the market keeping in view the the local manufacturers potential in so, and where this is the, 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 the pakistan is exporting to the whole world so the range is so massive we cannot compete we cannot compare because uh, the, the 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 product uh, range is just too huge we can only we have a limited uh, manufacturing capacity and that it comes to only to uh, some clothing and track suiting track suits and soccer kits but besides that uh, everything else when it comes to all your weight lifting gloves and uh, weight lifting equipment everything that cannot be manufactured here so that has to be imported when it comes to boxing head guards and boxing gloves that pakistan uh, still has has an advantage it will never get manufactured locally and it will <clears throat> always have to be in, be imported from pakistan so uh pakistan uh manufacturing sector is uh, is quite uh, jacked up and uh, we as south africans have limited uh manufacturing capacity okay thank you thank you sir do uh, do you uh, do somebody else have a question i hope uh... yes ma'am yes ma'am i am dr zain here i have a question for myself being a representative from tdap uh, you mentioned in your uh, opening remarks that uh, the duty on sports wear is 35% for south africa and for the other sports goods you mentioned 20% 25% no for the other so there how can categories ji 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 continue please yes how can we make pakistani products more competitive so that they can have a greater access in south african markets if let's suppose we are trying to export our sports wear uh, soccer kits and they are imposed 35% duties do you think still pakistani products can remain competitive in the market that's a very good question and um 
Let me tell you one thing. Textile is a protected sector in South Africa. Uh, and it is going to be more. Uh, apparel, the t-shirts that you wear. So whenever you are coming to South Africa, do not bring money to buy clothes. Your general Zara, H&M, any brand, regular brand will be three or four times more expensive in South Africa than elsewhere. I don't know about other countries. I mean, if you buy them in Dubai or Saudi Arabia or in UK, they are relatively very cheap when it comes to South Africa. South Africa is not the market where you buy your clothes. But those people who live in here, they buy these clothes on a higher duty, especially those that are imported. So the, uh, the government regime is protectionist in nature. Uh, they're protectionist. Duties are lower in Saku region, zero and relatively lower for the European market in different sectors. It may be noted that it is not zero. Even they have an FTA, SACU has an FTA with the European Union, but in certain categories, it is not even zero for them. It is only the, uh, everything. So textile is a very protected sector and they're not going to sign any FTA with anyone. Uh, it is very popularly goes in Pakistan that they're doing it with India. Just put it in your mind, they're not doing it with anyone anyone, including us or including or anyone. They have maybe special agreements with China, with USA, because th those are their big China, their biggest trading partner, even they do not have it with China. Now, how can we, how can we make our goods compatible? There are strategies that you can adopt by marketing your goods very well, by making the consumer av aware that your good exists creating a demand for your good, giving that alternate choice to the consumer for your good, um, and also branding your good in a compatible manner, which involves trade shows by the, by the chambers in together, they get combined four or five big manufacturers, they do uh, road shows, uh, virtual events, virtual events uh, attendance is not as much as, you know, road shows, uh, trade shows, and then um, email marketing, internet or online marketing. Continuously engaging those companies, firms will also provide contacts. But again, it's about marketing. Most of the time, people do not even know Pakistan makes soccer balls, which is very unfortunate. Only few people who are already engaged with Pakistani manufacturers, Pakistani side, they are aware of it. And uh, Mm, it's a hard reality. Uh, if you make something, you know, if you have a diamond and it's, it's, it's under the ground, it doesn't matter whether you have it or not, because nobody knows about it. You'll never find a, you you'll never find a buyer for it unless and until you market it, you make the public aware that you possess something very precious and of high quality. So we cannot ignore the, uh, the, the money being spent on marketing. Mm, and now I would request Yunus Hussain Sahab to add into it how Pakistani, Pakistani manufacturers, the doctors then asked how Pakistani manufacturers can make them, can make a market for their goods in South Africa. Ma'am, uh, ma if you can please add one more question, a supplementary question to this. And that is how can we enhance our visibility in South Africa? If we are not visible there, if we are not marketing there, then what do you suggest that Pakistan should do for making the exporters, the exported quality products visible over there in South Africa? I already answered your question, Dr. Zen. I said that you, you have to do online marketing, uh, continuous marketing, persistent, aggressive marketing, road shows and trade shows. Uh, now I would request uh, Yunus Hussain Sahab to answer, please, to add into my reply, please. See Yunus Hussain Sahab. Okay, are you talk? Yeah, my name is Yusuf. Yusuf, Yusuf. Yusuf. So Yusuf Badat, Yusuf. right? So I was confused if there's another participant, but the name of Yunus Hussein. My company name is Ig Hussein, but yes. my name is Yusuf Badat. <clears throat> Sorry about that. Yeah. So uh, listen, uh, in there's two 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 markets you can attack. Uh, the, that you can approach. One is your independent importers like myself, and there are probably not many. Uh, maybe there's about 20 importers like myself in this entire country. So that's one. Uh, and secondly, you can 
approach uh, chain stores and deal directly with chain stores. Uh, if for example, the mass smart stores. So there's two ways of approaching it, but uh, South Africa is a limited, limited market. And uh, we quite saturated with the, the existing suppliers already. It's quite a bit of suppliers who have been coming to South Africa for many, many years. And over the years, we, uh, we have established relationships with a few suppliers. And for example, Comet Sports, uh, Laurels, uh, which is uh, trading as Loyals before. This, uh, I don't know if you heard of the Sandal family in uh, uh, Sialkot. And then we got the, Ang uh, there's a company called Anki. Uh, so we've been dealing with a, a few companies for so many years and we're quite happy with their service. And for us to look at new suppliers, uh, if they are offering us products, uh, new products and products at a better price, we might look at them, but otherwise we're not gonna really change our suppliers currently, which we have a, a very good relationship with. Thank you, Balat Saab. Thank you so much. Um, Yunus Hussain is the head of the investment essay. I was confusing your name. I was uh, in my general uh, rhythm, so I was confusing. He is the head of investment essay in South Africa. And, um, you know, I mix sometimes Yusuf and Yunus, so my apologies for that, Balat Saab. Um, it's very good to hear about the importer satisfaction from the export Pakistani exporters because most of the time when some when somebody complains it also hurts us but when somebody expresses their satisfaction about their suppliers and their quality we equally share that uh, 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 that pride so uh, if there is anyone else who would like to ask questions please go ahead ma'am there is a question from Rana Naseed, he's also a sports goods exporter. Ji Ji Ji. Rana Naseed sahab, please. Can you hear me? Ji Ji Ji, I can hear you. Ji Rana Naseed sahab, um, we cannot hear you at the moment. I have a question that uh, how is the situation uh, in uh, South Africa now and uh, if we are doing a business uh, how is the uh, um, payment uh, transfers uh, from bank to bank because uh, in early part, uh, we don't have a secure banking uh, with uh, South Africa. And also I'm hearing that uh, some people uh, go there and uh, they told that uh, the, um, the South Africa is not safe for traveling. Do you have uh, any other uh, importer here who can uh, talk to us and uh, we can uh, share our information and uh, they can share their experience uh, with Pakistanis? Uh, you know, uh, regarding quality, Sialkut is an export-oriented uh, product uh, uh, city. And uh, we have a uh, top quality for different brands uh, like uh, Adidas, Nike, Zara, which you are telling, are also getting products from Sialkut. And uh, why not uh, uh, any South African brand is not uh, coming to buy from us their own brand with same standard of Adidas and other brands? Thank you very much. You can start with the payment one. 
Yeah. Okay. Payment one is uh, not an issue. Currently, our banks are hundred percent guaranteed. So, as long as you're working with the uh, with our main the main banks, which is uh, First National Bank, Standard Bank, and our we have a proper functioning banking system and there's no way you can fraud do any fraud so if you have to if you say you want 30 percent deposit balance on copy of bl uh, your money is 100 percent guaranteed you can be rest assured you won't have any issues Uh, so that is the one uh, question about the payment side. Uh, fortunately, because of my situation, I'm dealing with uh, friends and family who are friends who have become like family. Uh, we deal directly with one another and we got a good understanding. So that's not an issue. But obviously for any new, I would suggest for any, rather just keep everything above board, deal through the banks. The banks are 100% guaranteed. Our Forex department, our customs, uh, everything is in uh, proper order. And generally there's no uh, underhand business taking place. So on the payment side, uh, you got no issue. If you're dealing with letter of credit or, or, or deposit and balance on copy of BL. So that's what I can tell you from the payment side. And what was the second question? Uh, he was asking about um, the security situation. I think that has already been addressed, security situation in South Africa. No, ma'am, there was one other part that was most of the brands like Adidas, Nike, Zara, they are they have their suppliers from Salcote. And the exporter had the question that is it possible that somehow the suppliers from this site who are already manufacturing high quality goods could be coupled with importers who are brand conscious or those who are branding their products to get supply from Salcote? Okay, Zen. That's a very good question. And I will go back okay. to my... Um, my let, 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 let me... Gigi. Um, answer to that is uh, the brands are... Uh, the, there are chain stores that are importing uh, copy similar type as Adidas and Nike in the apparel, on the, in the clothing. Right? But the issue here is the duty. The duty structure for sports goods uh, like football. Yunusab, unmute yourself. Yunusab, unmute yourself. Uh, Yusuf Saab, Yusuf Saab, unmute yourself, please. Uh, you got you got muted, sir. Sorry. When it comes to manufactured garments this 35 to 40 percent duty so but they are uh, up to 45 percent for manufactured garments but there are companies in durban uh, who are importing from china uh, and making a cheaper version of the branded clothing and uh, so there is room, there is room for uh, importers or exporters from Pakistan for t-shirts and uh, fitness training, clothing and soccer kits. There are ways of uh, working around this duty uh, story. So there are, and there are uh, people, uh, chain stores importing from China. 
So how they can do it from Pakistan, I'm not sure. But uh, yes, you do have uh, chain stores who are, who, who, who are prepared to buy from you. But obviously, you're competing with China and you're competing with the local market. But the advantage is Pakistan has the, the, the range and Pakistan has the variety. So that's a good thing. So with a little bit of uh, hard work, you can break into this market. Okay, that's, that's what I can say from my side. Thank you, Yusuf Saab. Um, uh, Asad Sheikh Saab from Everest Sports. Uh, can you hear me, sir? Our second speaker is also with us, but he unfortunately is facing some technical. Uh, can you hear me, Asad Sheikh Saab? Hello? आरिफ साहब आप कुछ पूछना चाहते थे Doctors, then I think there are no more yeah. questions, and we should be binding up. Uh, we should be winding up the session. Ma'am, one last question, ma'am. There is one last question, please. Yes, yes, yes. Miss Mera, uh, just as we talk, and uh, Doctor Zain and yourself informed that we have the issue of marketing of our products. Yes. So I think the core issue is that we need uh, that we need to address is how to market our products. Yeah. And uh, surely seeing is believing. So I think we need to work on it, uh, develop some mechanism so that uh, we can participate in exhibitions. They should be bilateral uh, trade delegations that are exchanged. So like South African guys can come over here and look about the products and the production systems here. So they can feel comfortable if they want to impart some of the products like boxing gloves or the judo equipment or the hockey equipment uh, that is not manufactured in South Africa. So the brands who are doing sports we are already manufacturing in South Africa, they can also buy these things here, but they can only do it when they can see it here. The other part is that uh, as the gentleman from South Africa mentioned that uh, there have been individual efforts. So they there are a few people who are going over there, so it's a mix of uh, good and bad experiences, but we always are happy to hear about good ones. But I think we need, as TDAP, as Pakistan Sport Association, and uh, our commercial councillor, we need to do a coordinated effort to have a delegation over there and uh, participate in exhibitions, so the marketing uh, lacking of our products could be overcome. In this regard, I would like to know how can your office assist us and if we plan about some trade delegations after the COVID restrictions or uh, matchmaking, B2B meetings with our uh, uh, members of the association. I think this could be a good beginning. So we need to back it up. And in this regard, what is expected from uh, your side a part of Pakistan Sport Association. I would like to know about it. And also I would like to know how could you help us out in terms of sharing the data of companies, the good importers of different uh, products. We can share the list with you. So uh, this is something that we can do in the uh, near future as well. So thank you. Thank you, Mustan Saab, for your very elaborate question. And for this question. Uh, as far as the efforts of the Trade Commission, uh, three, I think in the beginning of this, uh, we, there was this Durban-based company. We got engaged with them uh, for matchmaking, uh, for the, this B2B matchmaking for the sports goods manufacturer uh, and sportswear manufacturers in Pakistan. We connected with Sialkot Chamber and we requested them to share the digital profiles of the manufacturer with us. 
because the company requested that they will first look into the digital profile and then they will suggest the relevant um, uh, the relevant importers unfortunately till date we did not receive a single digital profile from a single manufacturer in pakistan apart from that we also approached companies and companies also did not share any digital profile that's one thing the second thing is uh, finances are you know resources are anyway in economic term scarce but for government they're always scarce there are little funds and that has a lot of attention a lot of uh, sides are robbing for those funds there will be you know you have very good trade ministers in uh, sydney in london in uh, in uh, uh, the the team in um, uh, Africa in Nigeria now across the world the teams are very good now and they are struggling for funds as much as I am because I also want to highlight and also want to increase Pakistan's export to South Africa to hum tdp se koi ummeed chhod dete hain ke wo hame 1 rupya bhi dega aap tdp ko beech mein se nikal de beech mein reh gaye aap aur main aapne aap you asked me ke how can we do that you it is not a one time exercise it is a uh, it is a continuous regressive and non tiring exercise um i suggest i suggest road shows from city to city shortlist cities we can do that with you uh, make a club of five to 10 good companies who can pool in resources for that trip we will arrange your meetings with companies with clubs who are importers with individual b2b with importers like IG Hussain company in Durban but you have to spend that money and then at the end of it you can invite some of come invite uh, financially maybe partial supporting them or fully sponsoring them to invite them to visit uh, your manufacturing sites um i know but it is how it is you know when i was studying when i was doing mba my marketing teacher he said uh he was working for a very good multinational and he said now unfortunately the world is you may you put 10 rupees in the manufacturing and the rest of 90 on um, on marketing so all together the product would cost 100, 100 but uh, you would spend 90 because that 90 rupees or 90 rand would be spent on creating a demand for that market and that's how the competitive work the competitive industry or the so the capitalist market works creating a demand for your good and that you do not by only manufacturing that good the quality of the good is you do marketing to first introduce make the consumer purchase your good the quality of the good determines whether the consumer is going to buy it again or not so the quality of the good is not the first time is not responsible for, for the for consumer to purchase this first time you know by being on shelf does not tell the quality so when the consumer purchases it it is it is what the marketing does for you so that is my that is my suggestion and i hope you wrote it down and uh, we get to work on it okay ma'am thank you ma'am it was a very good suggestion and it was a very uh, good webinar i would like to to conclude it and uh, then we may form a, a, a whatsapp group queries and will engage all exporters as a chef as a chef sir our second speaker is here with us as a chef sir kya mujhe sun sakte hain as a hello okay i think we have lost him with this we will be winding up our today's session thank you everyone i will share my contact details one suggestion ji you ji you sir sahab yeah one suggestion is that uh, when i started 25 years ago ji sir uh pakistani uh embassy organized uh a pakistani exhibition in the main city in johannesburg main city in south africa called johannesburg so they had about uh, about 
40 to 50 exhibitors at uh, a conference center. And basically they advertise the conference to the business community. And it was uh, not open to the public. It was only open to uh, business people. And that's where we got a chance to meet uh, new suppliers. And we got a chance to meet uh, people who were doing specialized equipment and specialized stuff. And we got a chance to see Pakistan at our doorstep. So that might, that's one of the ways I think uh, the Pakistani exporters and manufacturers uh, need to work with uh, you by organizing a small exhibition and and they need to come down and how you have the Canton Fair and the Fair in Munich and other parts of the world. You need to do a similar type of thing, uh, but at a much smaller scale. And uh, and uh, that's a that's good way of getting your you finding new clients for your Pakistani exporters. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Yusuf Sahab. So uh, with this, that's a very good suggestion coming from a person in field. Uh, so Masood Sahab, you have to. Uh, uh, can I? Can I? Uh, there's one, one question. Uh, could, uh, finally, please, is, is it possible to let us, let us know what would be the best time for traveling to uh, South Africa and the best time for the buying time, which is the best season for the buying time for the coming year, such as this is the start of the winter now. So what would be the best time if a delegation is planned and the buyers are there to, to plan ahead for their next year for uh, buying? What is the best time? The winter in Pakistan, but summer in South Africa. G, U, uh, G Yusuf Saab. Okay, uh, I would say this time is to start planning uh, beginning of the year, in the first uh, four months of the year. So, uh, but no, there's no specific time because it's a long term story here, long term issue. You need to build a relationship, just get your foot into the door and start with one product. Even if you to sell it below cost to just get your foot into the door. And hmm. once you get your foot into the door, then after that, uh, slowly you can introduce your other time, but no specific time. But ideally I would say your our summer is a good time, January, February, March. Uh, maybe not, uh, wait, 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 let's see, not uh, January, February is not a good time. Say March, April, March, April okay. would be a, a suitable time uh, because generally February is the, the financial year in and stock take. January, you're just coming back into the uh, business after the holidays. So, so January and February is not good. But any of the months after that uh, is fine. So I would suggest March, April, May, and uh, we can. That will be ideal to 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 host a exhibition of Pakistani exporters. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you, uh, Yusuf Sahab for your time, we're really grateful to you. Uh, taking an hour out of active business hours is something that not everybody does. It's just the pure intention and your goodwill, the goodwill at your heart to help the Pakistani exporters, manufacturers to help them educate and inform about South African market. This is my job, taking a time, an hour or two or three is being what I am paid for by the government of Pakistan, but yours is uh, pure goodwill. So we really appreciate you and thank you for your goodwill for the time that you took out. And um, we are happy and uh, we are proud that you are connected to Pakistan and you are happy with your suppliers. Um, 
Inshallah, when I visit next time Durban, I'll be visiting you again and uh, bothering you and having a cup of tea with you again. Thank you, Badat Sahab. My, uh, my salam and good wishes to your entire family, to the team who's working there. Amen. And uh, to everyone who today participated from Pakistan, uh, Mohsen Saab, uh, Dr. Zen from Trade Development Authority of Pakistan, uh, Trade Development Authority, Pakistan Sialkot team also joined us, Javed Bal Sahab, Chaudhary Arif Sahab, Najaf Jahangir Sahab, and we also have M4 Tishimo, uh, uh, Shioma, um, a participation from South Africa. Unfortunately, the second speaker could not join us um, today, but we will uh, take him on board some other day um, on another webinar on sports goods. Uh, he is already, uh, he also imports from Pakistan. So this is it for today's session. And um, we will inshallah uh, join together um, or working on the recommendation and the suggestions from Yusuf Sahab. So um, good day and uh, goodbye everyone. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum.